Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the physiology of vomiting. Now, vomiting is also known as emesis and throwing up, amongst many other terms. And it is an involuntary, forceful expulsion of the contents of one's stomach, essentially through the mouth. We will look at the so-called emetic reflex, which is the vomiting reflex. And in order to understand the vomiting reflex, we need to talk about the brain. So here is the brain and the brain stem. There's an area of the brain stem called the medulla oblongata, where we find what's called the vomiting center. The vomiting center contains essentially muscarinic receptors, types of receptors. And when these receptors are stimulated within the vomiting center, this will trigger the vomiting reflex. So the process of vomiting. Close to the vomiting center, also near the medulla oblongata of the brainstem, is another area called the chemoreceptor trigger zone, or CTZ for short. Now, the CTZ, as the name suggests, gets triggered by chemicals. And the CTZ contains a few types of receptors, and these are the dopamine 2 receptors and the 5-HT receptors. 5-HT essentially is serotonin. So these are serotonin receptors. It's easy to remember CTZ because we know that chemotherapy stimulates this chemoreceptor trigger zone. So when the chemoreceptor trigger zone, the CTZ, is stimulated, it will then stimulate the muscarinic receptors of the vomiting center. And when the muscarinic receptors of the vomiting center are stimulated, this will cause the vomiting reflex, the emetic reflex. Though the chemoreceptor trigger zone is located in the medulla, like the vomiting center, the chemoreceptor trigger zone is located conveniently outside the blood-brain barrier. Now, the blood-brain barrier is a barrier preventing circulating substances in the blood from making contact with the brain um, and areas of the brainstem. Because the chemoreceptor trigger zone is situated outside the blood-brain barrier, it is thus more permeable to circulating substances such as cytotoxic agents, chemotherapy. Motion sickness is a very common thing people experience. And the cause of motion sickness actually comes from the inner ear, a bony structure called the labyrinth. The labyrinth is made up of many areas, one of which is called the vestibule a structure important for balance in space. Problems here will send electrical signals to the brainstem via the vestibular cochlear nerve. And the signals will get sent to an area specifically in the brainstem called the vestibular nuclei, which is located in the pons of the brainstem. The vestibular nuclei contain histamine 1 receptors and also muscarinic receptors. So when the vestibular nuclei is stimulated during, let's just say, motion sickness, or during also morning sickness, these signals will then be passed on to the chemoreceptor trigger zone. And from here, the chemoreceptor trigger zone will then send signals to the vomiting center in the medulla oblongata to trigger the vomiting reflex. Another cause of vomiting are things that occur from the cerebrum or the brain after it has processed all this sensory information. So what I mean is that, for example, when people are emotionally overwhelmed or when people are in severe pain or when they smell something really bad or they see something repulsive, something really bad, essentially all this stuff will get sensed by the brain, by the higher centers of the brain. And from the higher brain centers, this will then, this, this signal will then travel down to the vomiting center to stimulate the vomiting center to initiate the vomiting reflex. This makes sense because some people get really nauseous when they see blood or guts or they smell something like a type of food that just smells horrible. Again, the higher brain centers stimulate the vomiting center through muscarinic receptors.
Other causes of vomiting occur in the stomach. So let's just recap some anatomy here. So we have the mouth, which connects to the esophagus, which will travel down through the diaphragm, which is the muscle, muscular structure. The esophagus will then join onto the stomach, and then the stomach joins onto the small intestine. If we were to zoom into the stomach, we can see they form deep pits, deep pits and glands. And these are lined up by many different types of cells, one of which are called enterochromaffin cells. The enterochromaffin cells release serotonin in response to cytotoxic agents, which is, also, which is thought to stimulate then um, 5-HT3 receptors on sensory nerve fibers around the area. And stimulation of this sensory nerve fiber, which is actually the vagal nerve, will bring this information to the vomiting center to trigger the vomiting reflex. In summary, all the causes of vomiting we talked about essentially will stimulate the vomiting center, which is the output from which the vomiting reflex or the emetic reflex is initiated. Let's focus on what the vomiting reflex is and actually what happens during the process. First, it actually causes the lower esophageal sphincter to relax, which makes sense because we need food to come up towards the mouth when we vomit. We also need the diaphragm to contract and also the abdominal muscles to contract so that it will help push the food back up. And this happens because we are increasing intra-abdominal pressure when we contract our muscles. There are also autonomic changes such as tachycardia, which is increase in heart rate, and we also increase salvation as well as peristalsis. The vomiting reflex also causes the epiglottis to close on, um, at the top part because we don't want food to travel down to the lungs. And once the vomiting reflex does all these things, then the vomit or the food, expulsion of food can uh, happen. So that was the physiology of vomiting, the emetic reflex, the vomiting reflex. 